finding the equation of the perpendicular bisector of a line joining two points. The two points just could be at the end of a line or they could be two vertices on a triangle. The process it would follow would just be the exact same. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to first plot down the points that I have here, draw the straight line and then I'll talk to you about the, the process that we're going to follow to complete this type of work. Okay, so A is the point 1, 4. So let's go for 1, 4. So there's the point A here, 1, 4. And the point B is 5, and that'll be minus 6. So that'll take me down to there. So that's point B, 5, negative 6. Okay, I'll join these lines together there. Okay, so that's the straight line there that I'm trying to, to work out the perpendicular bisector of. Now, the word perpendicular bisector, if I look at that, uh, bisect would uh, cut this line in half. So if I cut that line in half, what I would do is I would find the point probably about there. That looks like uh, the midpoint of that line. And then what I'm looking at is the word perpendicular. A perpendicular bisector would be a line that would be running at right angles to this one here. So I would expect that there is somewhere close to being at right angles to that line. So it's the equation of this line here that I'm interested in working out in this type of question. Let me show you the, the process that we're going to follow. So just like I did there with uh, drawing the line, I'm going to first of all find the midpoint of the line between the points that are given. I'm then going to find the, the gradient between the points. I'll then flip that and find the, the perpendicular gradient. And once I find the perpendicular gradient from there, what I'll do is I'll substitute the perpendicular gradient and the midpoint into the equation of a straight line. Now usually what we have to do beyond this type of work is to find a point of intersection. I'm not going to go through that today, but uh, what you can look at is one of my earlier clips, and that would be on simultaneous equations. Uh, what, what you normally have to do is to find a point of intersection between maybe a perpendicular bisector, an altitude, or a median. Okay, so let's go on with the questions. And what I have is I have four questions to do. I'll go through the first one reasonably slowly, and what you can do is, uh, once you see how to do it, you can freeze the video and you can try the other three questions. Okay then, so the, the first thing that we're going to do is to find the midpoint of the line. Okay, so the midpoint of the line AB. What I'm going to do here is, I'm just going to take the mean of the X coordinates. Okay, so that'll be 1 and 5, so that'll be 1 plus 5. I'm going to divide that by 2 and the mean of the y coordinates as well. So that'll be 4 and minus 6. So 4 plus minus 6, that's all going to be divided by 2. And what that should give me is that should give me the midpoint that I worked out here just based on the drawing. So 1 plus 5 is 6 divided by 2 will give me a 3. And I've got negative 2 on the top divided by 2 will give me negative 1. So that's the point there. So that there is the midpoint that's sitting right there. Okay. So the second thing that I said that I would do, so that was the first thing. The second thing that I said I would do, I would try and find the gradient between the points that are given here. Okay, so let's find the gradient. So the gradient of AB is going to be equal to, I'll use y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And what I'll do is I'll then substitute my points in. So I'll take this point first. So that'll be minus 6, and I'm going to subtract 4. I'm going to take the 5, and I'll subtract the 1. From there, I've got minus 10 on the top. I've got 4 on the bottom. And I can simplify that down to minus 5 over 2. So that's the gradient of the line AB. The third thing that I said I would be doing is I would be looking at getting the uh, perpendicular gradient to that line. So that would be the gradient of this line that runs through here. And that's the equation that I'm trying to find. So the gradient, and what I'll do is I'll just draw down a wee perpendicular sign there. The gradient of the perpendicular is going to be equal to, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip and change this uh, gradient here. So if I flip it over, and I change the sign to positive, 
the gradient of this line here is 2 over 5. And the reason why I'm doing that is since we know that two gradients multiplied together, if they make negative 1, then they're perpendicular to each other. Right, so I've got my perpendicular gradient. Then for the last part, what I said that we would do is we would substitute. And I'm going to substitute that perpendicular gradient, which is equal to 2 over 5. And I'll also substitute the midpoint. That's the midpoint of AB. And that was 3 minus 1. And what we'll do is we'll substitute that into the equation of a straight line, which is just y minus b equals m x minus a. Okay, this here is going to be my a value, this here is going to be my b value, and my m is going to be 2 over 5. So let's go ahead and do that. So it's y minus b, which will be minus 1, and that is equal to 2 over 5 x, and I've got a minus, and I've taken away 3 there. Okay, what I'll do beyond that, I'll just do one more line just to tidy that up just now. And what I'd be expecting is probably here is where I would be getting my mark for that equation. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to prepare it a bit further so that we're going to be ready for doing any um, simultaneous equations work. And I'll have the x, then the y, and then I'll have the number on the other side of the equals. So if I've got a fraction like this here, what I'll do is I'll multiply everything by 5. So if I multiply by 5, really I'm just multiplying this side here by 5 and that should give us 5y plus 5 is equal to, and I'm just going to multiply this side by 2. So I've got 2x minus 6. What I'll do is I'll take the, the, the 2x over to the, the left-hand side. So I'll just go for minus 2x plus 5y, and I'll take the 5 over to this side. That should give me minus 11. And that would be my final answer for this question here. OK, you can freeze the video just now and try the next question. OK, I'll give you the solution to this one as well. Right, I'm going to plot the point C, which is 7, 4. So 7, 4 will be here. So that's point C. And the point D is minus 3 and 2. So that will be to there. OK, that's the point D. Minus 3. Just draw that up. Usually you don't need to draw it, but um, a, a diagram does help sometimes with this type of work. Okay, so let's let's look at this and we'll go for our point. So we'll go for the midpoint. The midpoint of AB is going to be equal to. I'm going to add the x coordinates together, so it'll be minus three plus seven divided by two, and I'll add the y coordinates together. That's a two and that's a four, so two plus four over 2. What that should give me is the coordinates in the midpoint. So that's 4 divided by 2 will give me 2. And that's 6 divided by 2 will give me 3. So I'm looking at a midpoint of 2, 3. So that's my midpoint that's there. Right, let's find the gradient of, and it's a line CD. Oops, I've written AB there. Let's make that CD up at the top. So it's CD. And I'm going to use Y2 minus Y1 all over x2 minus x1. Right, let's start with this point here. So I've got 4, and I'm going to subtract 2. I've got 7, and I'm going to subtract minus 3. Okay, on the top there I've got 2, and on the bottom I've got 7 plus 3, which will give me 10. So that should give me a gradient of 1 fifth. I'll then find the perpendicular gradient. And what I'm going to do from there is I'm going to flip that over, so that'll be 5 over 1, and I'll change the sign. So that's just the same as minus 5. Then what I'll do is I'll substitute the perpendicular gradient, which is equal to minus 5, and the midpoint, CD, which is equal to 2, 3, into the equation of a straight line y minus b equals m x minus a. Right then, so there's my a value and my b value. So what we have is y minus 3 is equal to 
minus 5, x minus, and it's a 2 that's there. Right then, so I should expect my mark there for this, this uh, question. I'm going to prepare it again, so what I'll do is I'll multiply out the right hand side. So that'll give me minus 5x, and that'll give me a plus 10. Bring the x over to, to this side here, that'll give me 5x plus y. I take this 3 over to that side, it becomes a plus, and that'll give me 13. And that'll be the answer to that one. So, my perpendicular sector should be something of, let's see, 2. To there. Okay, so that's the equation that I've just worked out there. Okay then, so let's move on to the next question. Right, freeze the video if you like, and um, I'll give you the solution. Okay, let's plot the points. So 0 minus 3, 0 minus 3. So that's going to be the point E. The point F, 5 minus 2, so let's go to 5 and minus 2, should be there, that's point F, 5 minus 2, okay. Right then, let's, let's see how we're going to go about this one. So find the midpoint first of all, and the midpoint is EF, so it's the midpoint of EF. That's going to be equal to the average of the x coordinates, so that'd be 0 plus 5 over 2. And what we're going to have here is we're going to have we've got minus 3 and minus 2. So minus 3 plus minus 2 all over 2. So that should give me the midpoint coordinates of 5 over 2. And here I've got minus 5 over 2. So that's my, mid, my midpoint of that line. Okay, so that looks as though it's going to be right there. Midpoint. Right, let's find the gradient. The gradient of EF is going to be equal to... Using the, the gradient equation. Let's go for minus 2, minus, minus 3. And I'll start with 5, and I'll take away 0. That gives me minus 2 plus 3 will give me 1, and I've got 5 on the bottom. I'll then find the perpendicular gradient. Flipping that over gives me 5 over 1 and change the sign. So what that gives me is basically a gradient of minus 5. I'll then substitute the gradient that's perpendicular, which is the minus 5, and the point, the midpoint of EF. That was 5 over 2, that's minus 5 over 2. I'm going to substitute that into y minus b equals mx minus a. Right then, let's go ahead with that, and we'll probably have some fraction work to do here. So I've got y minus b, which is minus 5 over 2, that's my b value, that's my a value. This is going to be minus 5 for the gradient that I'm going to use. And then I'm going to subtract 5 over 2 from there. Right then, so let's see how to work this one out here. What we'll do is we'll multiply this bracket out here in the next line, and I'll sort this sign out here. So that'll be y plus 5 over 2, and that's going to be equal to minus 5x, and that's going to be plus 25 all over 2. Okay, so that's a minus 5 times the minus. 5 over 2. Right, so from there I can see I've got uh, the denominators there, I've got 2's on the, the bottom line that are there. So what I could do is I could multiply through by 2. So that would give me 2y, that would give me plus 5, that would give me minus 10x, and that would give me plus 25. From there I'll just gather on the left hand side with the x's first, so 10x plus 2y, I've got 25 there, bringing that 5 over becomes a minus, so that gives me 20. And that should be my solution there. Right, let's look at the, the last question in this, uh, the, the perpendicular bisector work. 
Right, well, let's plot the points. So minus 5, minus 6, so minus 5, and let's go to here, that'll be minus 6, so that'll be the point G, minus 5, minus 6, the point H, minus 4, and we're going up 5. So that should take us to there. Minus 4, 5. Okay, that's the point H. Just draw that line up. Okay, so now we're looking at uh, finding the, the midpoint. So let's go for the midpoint first of all. The midpoint of GH. Remember that's just, we'll just find the, the mean. So I've got minus 4 plus minus 5 all over 2 and I've got 5 and minus 6. So 5 plus minus 6 all over 2. So what that should give me is minus 9 all over 2. So I can just take that as it is, minus 9 over 2, and I have just minus 1 over 2. There we go. Okay, so that was the 5. Uh, take away the 6 will give me a minus 1 all over 2. Okay, so from there, what we'll do is we'll then find out the, uh, when we've got the midpoint, what we'll do is we'll work out the gradient. So the gradient of G, H. So the gradient of GH is going to be equal to, using the formula, and what we've got is, let's go for 5, take away minus 6, and I've got minus 4 on top here, and what we'll do is I'll take away minus 5. So that's going to give me 11 on the top, and on the bottom, what I've got is I've got minus 4 plus 5, so that'll give me a 1 on the bottom. So that just gives me a gradient of 11. So if I'm trying to find out the perpendicular gradient, what I'll do is I'll just look back at this one here, because 11 is just the same as 11 over 1, and what I'll do is I'll flip that, and I'll change the sign. The reason why I'm doing that is because gradient 1 times gradient 2 will give me negative 1. Okay, so, so from there, I'm just going to substitute the things that I found. So I'm going to substitute my perpendicular gradient, which is equal to minus 1 over 11, and the midpoint of GH, and that's minus 9 over 2, minus a half, and I'm going to substitute it into y minus b equals m x minus a. Right then, so let's go ahead and do that. So there's my point A, there's my point B. So y minus, and I've got minus a half, is equal to the gradient, which is minus 1 over 11, x minus, and that's minus 9 over 2. Okay, so what I'll do first of all is I'm going to multiply by 11 to get rid of this 11 from here, and what I'll do is I'll just sort this sign out while I'm doing that. So that should give me 11y, and that's going to be plus, and that's going to be 11 all over 2, and that's going to be equal to, and then I've got a minus 1 here that I'm going to multiply out by, so that'll give me minus just the 1x, or just minus x, and then minus 1 times positive 9 over 2, that'll give me minus 9 over 2. Right, getting to this stage here, if I was going to prepare for simultaneous equations, what I would do is I'd multiply throughout by 2. So if I multiply by 2, that should give me 22y plus 11 is equal to minus 2x, and that'll give me minus 9. Now it's looking a bit easier to sort out. I'll bring the, the minus 2x to the, the left-hand side. That gives me 2x. I've got plus 22y. And what I've got is I've got a minus 9 there. Bringing the 11 over becomes a minus as well, so that'll give me a minus 20. Okay, so that would be the complete answer for that. And that gives me the, the perpendicular bisector of the line joining these two points here. Okay, so, so hopefully this has helped you. This, this will be very important to be used in your exam. It will certainly feature as one of the, the questions in your exam, usually the first question in the exam, non-calculator work, so um, I wish you all the best on this one, so good luck.